there's one. Oh, sweet, that's a good one. <laughs> First cast. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, it's a nice walleye. Oh, dude. It's a beauty. Look at that walleye. He's, <laughs> he like jumped too. That's a really nice walleye. Get over here. Get over here. Get over here, you pig. Oh, baby. Quality walleye. That's what I'm talking about. Not a lot of big ones this year, but this is a really nice high quality walleye. Very fat fish. Probably mid-20s. I'd say at least 24. Could be as much as 25 or better. On that brown and yellow bucktail jig, real slow. Oh man, what a beauty. You know, it's been a slow year for big ones, for me at least. Only caught two about this size this year that broke in 25 inches. That's a master class for New York. You know, last year I caught quite a few, or like 25 to 28, but this year this is one of two that's just a little over 25, so I'm real happy with her. Beautiful, fat, master class female. There she goes. There's another one doing the same thing. Just jigging again. That was awesome. You now that last fish, I like to release them when they're master class or a little over, especially when they start to get rare. That uh, first one's probably right on the edge of what I'd call a big one for a small river. It's about a one in a hundred fish and also a you know a master class fish. Kind of like catching like a 18, 19 inch smallie, even though I catch a lot more smallies that size than I do walleyes that size by about five or six fold. Still not terribly rare walleye, but it's it's a well above average walleye still. That's why I'd call it a big one. Certainly not a trophy though. It's a nice little guy. That's pretty sweet. Pretty awesome. I'm not gonna fuss around keeping these smaller ones today. You know, that's your standard keeper range one. Almost all the ones I catch around here are this size. 16 inches or so, 15 and a half. Let them go here. Oh man, they're just smacking it today. Yesterday, there it was such a... It was a day like filled with short strikes, it was awful. You could feel them coming up, breathing on the hair of the bucktail, and just abandoning it for the rest of the day. Got this guy quite a bit later. Those first two were right away. This guy finally spooked up on a black, brown, and uh, silver zonker jig. It's a quality walleye. Oop, if I could grab them here. Jeepers. Come on, get in my hand. There we go. Spraying the last one. It's a nice keeper inch wide. Tail jig there. Probably, uh, you know, 17 and a half or so. Yeah, right around there. Go here. Let go of my, let go of my jig. <laughs> there we go. Something pretty serious on here. <laughs> Holy cow. I thought it was a snag at first. It started moving to the right. Kind of got this buckle down. He's just chugging. I started moving to the to the right to snag. I thought I caught a log. <laughs> and then he started moving. I was like, oh boy. Holy cow. We got either a carp or a big northern or a muskie. And he's feeling more like a carp. It's going awfully slow. Usually when I hook these bigger pike, they you know, in upper 30s, they just start ripping. <laughs> see, this guy's lumbering like a carp. That's my guess, but we'll see. Hopefully. This might take a while. A lot of times in the winter, the carps will, like, school up in certain spots. I haven't seen it so much this year, but other years I've seen it real heavy. You can't cast two casts without catching a carp by accident, you know, while you're jigging in some spots. Oh jeepers, I can't budge this guy. 
Oh, this is going to take a while. It's uh, somewhere where you can run around a little at least. Hope it's not a carp, that'd be amazing. Yeah, depending on where you hook a carp, you know, I'm not... <laughs> and where you foul hook a carp, if it is foul hooked, once in boom when they eat it, but if it is foul hooked, um, depending on where you hook it, it makes it easier or harder in different kinds of ways. So a lot of times, like, if you hook them in the side, usually the, the jig will pop off right away. But, uh, Oh jeepers, I don't really want them to go all the way across there. I don't have much of a choice though. Well, I got a six pound test. Some walleye fishing. That's got to be a carp. He's moving just like a carp. Oh, he's got a stick on him too. That's why I don't want him to go across. Dang it. Got a stick on him. That's the worst. See, I see it. You probably can't see it, but there's a stick floating around. I see it poking out of the water. He's got a stick on him on the line or something not good it's gonna spool me here too because i don't have a ton of line on this oh jeepers i don't want to walk them down that's so annoying but depending on where you hook them in the fins or whatever um it can uh it can uh and he feels he feels good size though it can make the fight a lot different if you hook them in like the uh, dorsal fin you're pulling them in like sideways awkwardly the whole time it's not that hard of a fight but it's it's really awkward and, and he's heavy he doesn't pull very hard but he's heavy and he like goes side to side a lot if you hook them in the tail fin then they're constantly swimming away from you it's a hard fight but they're not as heavy feeling you know it's a real pain in the butt fight because you got to fight them 10 times over as they go back out over and over again if you hook them in the mouth that's the easiest then you can turn them and pull them in towards you uh. walk this guy down here whoa hope i have enough camera left for this I may not I, 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 uh, I used the camera yesterday and I left it in the car because I forgot about it. And then, uh, creepers, creepers, and this guy's really bu not budging very well. Maybe it's the stick, I don't know. But you never know until you really see him. There's a lot of carp in this river, around 20 pounds. That's a pretty, I wouldn't call that average carp, but it's a pretty typical carp. Most of the carp I catch are probably around like 18 pounds ish. You know, they're in the low 30s. Yeah, he's just not budging very well. I don't want to work him too much. This is a really crappy old six pound test. I'm putting, a, I'm putting a bit of pressure on him enough. Oh, please be a northern, even though you're not fighting like a northern in the least bit. <laughs> That's all I want is trophy northern, trophy walleye, trophy smalley. So close to all of them. So many times. Uh, so close. Probably had all of them on and lost them all before. Very good chance of that. Lost a lot of big fish. Just like this right here, you know, and then dumb stuff happens, especially with toothies. When you're fishing for a while and you have a big toothy on, they'd cut you off so often. Or even more often, they just pop off. Places I fish are more ridiculous than this. Now he's coming in a little easier. Oh. Watch him be like a tiny carp with a big stick on him. <laughs> That'd be funny. He doesn't feel as big now all of a sudden. I don't know what happened. Maybe he lost a stick. I don't know. You see he's coming in a lot easier. How fast it... Maybe he's just coming towards me. I don't know. We'll see here. It's been a, I haven't hooked a lot of carp this winter. And they just haven't been pulled up in the same places for their winter, their winter powwow. Also, I haven't been fishing as much, but... You know, now he's, now he's bending the rod a little bit. There we go. Inch at a time. I'll take it though. Uh, come on over here, honey. He's really just lumbering. Maybe it's a turtle. <laughs> I think he was moving too fast right at right at the beginning to be a turtle though. And 
They might bury themselves in the mud. I'm not sure exactly what they do. I'm not sure what snappers do specifically. This ain't no no painted turtle. It's a turtle. <laughs> Get over here. You're not that far away. Come on. Like 30, 40 feet out. Get over. Nope. He doesn't like that. Come on. Don't do this to me. I don't want to run. Jeepers creepers. I kind of want my jig back too. That would be nice. Now we're in the faster current. Ah, oh, what a pain in the butt. Maybe if I get ahead of them, as difficult as that's going to be. Oh, if I had a dollar for every time I've done this, well, walleye fishing, man, I'd be a pretty rich man. Chasing carp. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Wishful thinking really doesn't help in these situations. Oh, that sounded like glass. Okay. Oh, this current is terrible. This is not the place to be. It's going to be a little while until I get out of it, too. Possibly a long while, actually. Oh, I see him. He's like a hundred feet out. Cheapers creepers. Come on. He's rolling around too. He's definitely a carp. Get over here. Come on. Get over here. You see him? He's right there. He's like rolling on the surface. That is a sure sign of a foul hooked animal. They're rolling around the surface. Come on, get over here. Oh. Oh. Don't really have the energy for this. Ugh. Not today. Where are you? There you are. <laughs> All I gotta do is lift up on him. He just rolls on the surface there. Just a little bit past that branch. 15 feet past it. That big branch. I know it's a wide angle lens, so it's a little distorted what you see. But guys, All right, we hit the slack water, finally. Oh, what a pain in the butt. Man. Creepers, creepers. <sighs> I think he's like stuck on a stick still or something because he's really not pulling at all. He's just a dead weight floating with the current. There's definitely a fish there though. <laughs> I promise you that much. Get yeah, over here. He's tired. He's good size too. Decent, at least. At least an average one, I guess. It's looking all right sized. Come on, be three feet plus. Come on, baby. See a lot of like 34, 35 inch carp. Quite a few, 32, 33, 31. Not a lot, 36 plus. I've, I've caught them, but not. That's where it starts to get pretty rare in the carp around here. I've, oh, come on, really? I was so close. He was like 10 feet away. Stop, stop, you jerk. Get over here. That's annoying. Come on, come on. Stop it. Behave yourself, just get over here. As soon as you get over here, sooner I can let you go. Jeepers, creepers. I definitely got him on the back end. See, that's what I'm talking about. When you get him on the, even though he's cold winter carp and he doesn't want to move at all. I got him on the back end, he still took another run. He's probably going to take another. Before I get him in here. He'll just keep running out away from you if you foul hook him on the back end there. 
fortunately I'm kind of in a slack water, a little edge pocket here, a little bit. Get over here. I don't want to lose my jig, man. That's a $3 jig. <laughs> I want to be petty, but that's $3, that jig you got on there. That is a pike catcher. He's all right. Not sure how all right, but got a little weight to him. Let's see how big he actually is here. I got him on the fin right above the back fin. So I'm getting like a combo of dead weight and pulling away from me. And that, that little tiny fin right above the tail. I forget what it's called. Uh, this line sounds so dusty. You hear it like scraping through the guys. It's not necessarily the best thing. It doesn't sound super dusty though, so it's okay. But I don't like that sound. Sometimes that's, that means a really bad thing. When you hook these things in the fin, man, it sticks really good. I forgot to say that. Like, just by accident or whatever, that, that jig just sticks in there. See, I'm keeping the line at the same angle so I don't lose them right here. It wouldn't be the end of the world, though. He's not that big. He's okay. He's your pretty typical carp, it turns out. He's just kind of thick. It's not nearly as long as I was hoping. All right, get over here, buddy. He's all right. He's a low 30s carp with some chunk. He's a hefty guy. He's got some girth to him. Ugh. I got a measurement against my rod there. I'm not going to carry him all the way back for his sake and mine. He's a decent carp. It's a pretty typical one. He's got like width though. I'm not a crazy long fish, but he's got the width. Oh man, 